So difficult conversations could happen anywhere and amongst any people. And there are several things that are really important to think about as you're preparing to have a difficult conversation. And let's for a minute assume you're going to be prepared for it and not be caught in the middle of one unawares. So the first thing to think about is Orlowski's first law of communication, and that is don't assume the worst first. Don't assume that your intentions are good and the other person you're talking to has bad intentions or they purposely made you feel bad or look horrible or they said what they did because they were trying to demean you. We often do things without even realizing why we're doing it. And it's true for the other person too. So as you're having this difficult conversation, try really hard to put aside your assumptions, put aside your feelings of negativity, and just think about what are we having this conversation about. So that's the second thing. What's my goal? Why am I having this conversation? Is it to have, to build a relationship with someone? Is it to fix a problem? Is it to um, s uh, get some work done? Is it a combination of all of those things? What is the purpose of having this conversation? And how can I say it in a way that he or she is going to hear it? And I don't mean hear the words, but I mean really understand what you're saying. Okay? Um, which gets to a third point, and that's the whole concept of trying to help people save face. We're real good about knowing what we need to preserve our sense of identity, who we believe we are. I believe I'm a good colleague, I believe I'm a good friend, I believe I'm a good parent, I believe I'm skilled, I'm knowledgeable, whatever. Okay? Um, and we want to preserve that. Okay? We rarely think about the other person during the conversa a difficult conversation. So we're all about preserving our sense of who we believe we are, but we don't think as much about how can I help you preserve your sense of who you think you are. And so if I can hold my conversation in such a way that it helps you not feel blamed or shamed or put on the spot or embarrassed or whatever, I'm more likely to have a conversation that's fruitful because what happens is that you're actually going to be hearing what I'm saying. And so if we can start to approach these conversations more with, wait a minute, what's going on in your world? Why? You know, why isn't it easy for you to do this? Why haven't we had this happen before? With curiosity, in a sense that we're both in this together, then those difficult conversations become not quite so difficult. And if you're interested in learning more about this, we've got two classes that are coming up. You know, one in the winter semester, one in the spring semester. It's a great class. We have a lot of fun. You get a book. And um, please come join us. Hope to see you there.